So now we're going to look at how limits and derivatives go together. I don't know why I was looking over there. <laughs> the camera's there. All right, so here we go. So what does it mean to be continuous? It's kind of funny because a lot of times in math classes, they will say, if you can draw without picking your pencil up off the paper, then that's continuous. Okay, so we like continuous functions because they're definitely the easiest to work with in calculus. So in other words, we have a graph that has no breaks, no holes, no jumps on a particular interval. And we need to stress that because it may not be continuous overall, but we might could just look at a particular interval. And so what this means is very, very small errors in X. Okay, so again, we're kind of closing that gap produce small errors in our actual function. So if I have a ball and I'm throwing it straight up, so at certain times you can check the actual feet and I plot this, well, the first thing to notice is this is not continuous. However, this is where we talk about tiny gaps in X produces tiny gaps in the value of my function. So in other words, if I make the gap, the time gap smaller and smaller and smaller, then the height gap would be smaller. So we typically just smooth it, okay, like this, and say that it's continuous. Um, we could model this as a quadratic. I'm, I'm giving you this. So this would be a way, I, I kind of already understand that x squared is a parabola. You stick a negative on it upside down. There's my y-intercept. So it looks like a pretty good model. So let's talk about this whole idea of the limit. We started out, we just said we're finding slope, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And then we said, well, instead of y2 minus y1, let's call it evaluating the function, okay, at that particular value. So instead of y2, we call it f of x2. And then instead of y1, we call it f of x1. And then we came back and we said, well, let's call this interval here H. Okay, so that's what we keep calling the gap as it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. And then the top up here is still the same thing. We're saying we're interested in X1. How far away that gap do we have to go? And so we move to instantaneous rate of change because that right there, the limit. So what this is saying, the limit as h approaches zero, what does that mean? The limit as h approaches zero, the limit as h approaches, so in other words, that gap is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, and as we talked about, well, how small do you get it? Depends on your measuring um, item that maybe you can only get a certain interval, but we like to algebraically now come and say, well, what if we let h approach zero, and we go through all the steps to manipulate our function, then what do we actually get? And as we've said before, we get another function, which is the actual derivative. Okay, so this is the same thing as the derivative, taking the limit of my average rate of change function. So my average rate of change, when I take the limit, becomes the instantaneous rate of change, which is what we call the derivative. So if I want to find the exact value of the derivative using the limit de definition for the speed of the ball, remember the derivative, rate of change, how fast the ball is going, I want to find it at a tenth of a second into the flight. And I'm given this function. You'd have to be given an, an actual function. So what I do is where I see 0.1, I'm going to plug in, or where I see x sub 1, I'm going to plug in 0.1 because that's my value of interest. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through all the steps and I'm going to plug this into my function. Okay, so very carefully look at this. The left side, and I tend to put these square brackets to separate the f of 0 0.1 plus h, my function, negative 16x squared plus 20x plus 7, everywhere you see an x, you plug in 0 0.1 plus h. So negative 16, everywhere you see an x, you plug in 0 0.1 plus h squared, because it's x squared, plus 20 times where you see an x, you plug in 0 0.1 plus h, 
and then plus 7 to finish off my function, minus, this is this minus sign. Now on this side, it's just my f of x1. So everywhere I see an x, I'm going to plug in my value of interest, which is 0 0.1. So I plug in negative 16x squared, 0 0.1 squared, plus 20x, 20, 0 0.1, and then plus 7. And from here, you're home free. It's just algebra. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through a whole bunch of steps here. And I'm going to say, well, what if I expanded this out? Because that's FOIL, right? That's 0 0.1 plus h times 0 0.1 plus h. So I expanded that out. I multiplied or distributed 20 into 0 0.1 and h, so that's that piece. Um, over here, just went ahead and squared 0 0.1 and then multiplied 20 times 0 0.1. Moving right along is then next, I distribute the negative 16, so that's getting distributed. All right, and then um, over here on this side, I distributed, distribute negative 16. Okay, so kind of convince yourself of all these steps that I'm doing, okay, going through all these steps. Of course, I'm going to collect like terms. Again, this is just algebra. So I'm going to go through and collect all my like terms. And if you remember, I actually mentioned this in another lecture. I said that this step, when you get everything um, you know, to the point where you've distributed everything, you've expanded everything, everything that does not have an H should cancel. So notice 8.84 and minus 8.84. If that did not happen, then you need to back up and redo this problem. Okay. So in other words, if your numbers didn't, and the reason why is I want to, all I'm going to have left are things with H's here. And so now I can factor out an H up top, and then the H's cancel. I don't know why this is flipping every time. The H's cancel, and now I can say let H go to zero. So once again, get through all that. If I let my H go to zero, then I get my value of 16.8, which again, a derivative, a rate, is in feet per second because my function was in feet, my time was in second. And if I go look at my table, then I see that I get the 16.8 when I let h go to zero. Okay, so you can see if you pick really, really small values. So in other words, let's say you didn't want to do the algebra. What you wanted to do is just plug in a really small value for h and then just plug everything in your calculator, right? Because then you wouldn't have to do any algebra. Well, what you would see is as your values get smaller, whether you pick um, small positive values or small negative values, you would see that in the long run, as that gap's getting smaller and smaller and smaller, it's approaching a particular value. And the value that it's approaching is 16.8. And that's what we call a limit. Okay, so that, that's it. So that's the first part of this lecture. I want you to really take this in, really go through all of these steps. Stop the video. Try to make sure you understand every single step of what I did. Where'd you get that number from? Where'd you get this number from? Okay, before moving on, and then we'll continue this lecture in a part two.